I see you. Is pay vav. And let me just review on pay heim and bays what we have to know in order to start pay vav. And that is the statement of Rav, which you'll see three lines above the end of Pei Heim and Beis, that Gagin Valios Lo Niskadshu. And that means that although the Azara has Kedusha to it, but the Alios, those rooms and chambers that were built on top, or the roofs, they don't have that Kedusha. They weren't sanctified. And the Gemara asked Akasha because Rav himself indicated that they ate the Korban Pesach on the Gag. And that's where they recited Halel on the night of Pesach. So the Gemara reinterprets that statement of Rav. And the Gemara says, Lo. And that's, you'll see the last word on the top line of Pevav. The Achli Biara vi Amri Biigro. It wasn't that they went up to eat the Karm Pesach on the roof, and there they recited Hallel, but that they ate the Karm Pesach in their homes. And then for the, it was quite crowded. So when they wanted to get more air and they went up for Hallel, they climbed up to the roof. The Gemara asks, Amy, so with two lines down now on Pevav, is this really so that you're allowed to eat um, on the on the uh, on the alios, he says Vasnan, we have a Mishnah. Are you allowed to eat on the bottom and then go up to recite Halel? which means that the suuda should be ended, and once you end it with the Achilas Pesach, you don't eat anything after that. And Omar Rav, Rav made a comment on that Mishnah. It's the last Mishnah in this Masechta that they shouldn't start eating the Pesach here and then finish it up somewhere else. So how could they have possibly, according to Rav, have gone up to the roof? Rav says that they went up to the roof after they finished the Suda, and that's where they read Kriya Sahalil, and once they had completed the carbon Pesach, then there's no longer any prohibition about moving from or about being oker from one chabura to the other. But Enochinami, when Rav says Ein Okri mi he was talking Bishas Suda. And we'll have a discussion later on about whether or not you can you can start the Suda in one place, finish it in another place. Toshma. Now the Gemara is going to ask a series, uh, series, a whole series of questions here, objections against Rav, and to try to prove that indeed the Gag and the Aliyos was sanctified. And as we mentioned yesterday, the sanctification of the Gag and Aliyos is relevant to the eating of Kochi, Kochi, Kochim, because Kochi, Kochim have to be eaten in the Azara. So can they be eaten in the uh, chambers or the roof, rooftops of the Azara? Chambers on top of the Azara. And it's relevant also to Yerushalayim because let's say you have a rooftop in Yerushalayim. Are you allowed to climb up onto the roof and eat your Mais Hashani or Kachim Kalim? Hashma, we learned in the Brisa, Abashol Omer, Alias, Beis Kachim Kadoshim, Chamura, Mi Beis Kachim Kadoshim. And what happens is they would, on occasion, and we'll see exactly why, they would climb up to the roof on top of the Kodesh Kodoshim. And Rabbi Shol comments that the roof of the Kodesh Kodoshim had a greater sanctity than the Kodesh Kodoshim itself. And why is that so? Because we measure Kedusha by how often, how frequently you have license to enter into that place. On an annual basis, you had a permission for the Kohen Godel, at least, to enter into the Kodesh Kodoshim. Whereas in contrast, and that was on Yom Kippur, right? On contrast, in the Aliyah's base Kodesh Kodoshim, to climb up to the top on the roof of the Kodesh Kodoshim, 
The Gemara has three possibilities. One possibility is that they went every seven years to the top of the roof of the Kodshin Kedoshin. Amelie, others say it was Pamai it was it was twice every seven years. And Amelie, others say it was Pamachas Biyom, it was only once in 50 years. So you have once in 50 years, you have twice in seven years, or once in seven years. And why did they go up to the top? Leda Mahi Tzricha. This was what we call Bedek Habayis. In other words, they would check to make sure that everything was in proper order and there were no cracks and crevices that had to be fixed. In any event, we see clearly from this price that the top of the base country, Kadoshim, which is one of the cases that Rav was mentioning before, Leos, has a greater sanctity than even the Kodesh Kadoshim. That's against Rav who holds that Gagva Leos, Lotus Kadoshim. Oh, Rav Yosef, you're asking me a question from the Kodesh Kadoshim, a Hechal Nekum Venesiv Inish? A person should stand up, Venesiv, and he asks a Kasha on Rav from the Hechal? Shani Hechal, Hechal has a different status. And the Gemara is going to now establish that the Aliyah to the Hechal, and included in the Aliyah to the Hechal, of, are, of course, the Aliyahs of the Kaddish Kadoshin. That has one din, and those were sanctified. Rav is talking about the Azar. He's not talking about the Aliyos of the Hechal. And why the Aliyos of the Hechal different? This is a very, very famous Pasuk in Kodshim. It's quoted all over the place. When David HaMelech left his last testament for Shlomo to build the base on Migdash, he gave him a ksav. It's called a kol b'ksav. And the ksav was a design plan for the base on Migdash and included within it the Holy of Holies, the Ulam and the base Paroches, these are all parts of the Hechal. And Akobik Sav Mian Hashem, there was a Sav that was from Hashem. It means that God commanded David Mel how specifically he should build the bias. And this was the base on which David Mel passed on to his son Shlomo the details and the requirements of how to build the bias. And here we're talking about something that has sanctity, the base of Migdash itself. But everything that's included in this Hakol B'Ksav is only Hechal. And Rav, when he said that Gagin Valios Lonis Kadoshu, he was not referring to the Alios or the Gagin of the Hechal, but rather to the Alios of the Azara or to the Alios of Yushalayim that we mentioned earlier. Toshma, I'm going to disprove Rav Shita from a Mishnah in my Sushen Alashikos Abnuyos Bakodesh. Now, the word Bakodesh means in the Azara itself. So you have these chambers that are built in the Azara, Upsuchos Lachol, and there's no entranceway where you can enter in from the Azara into these various chambers. You enter in from Chol. The word Chol here, which means relative to the Azor, it's called Chol. That's the Harabais. Even though the Harabais does have certain a certain level of sanctity, for sure, and let's say various kinds of Tmeim are not allowed to enter into the Harabais, but nevertheless, relative to the, to the Azara, it's called Chol. Ah, how do you like that? I was mechaving to his footnote here. He writes, Nikra harabais chol afshu machna levia l'fisha ein eno kadosh ki kedusha sazor shei machna shchina. So it means it's a relativity theory. Relative to the azora, the uh, harabais is, is, is classified, defined as chol. Now, then it says, 
in that mission, tochan chol, he means the fact, the following, that if you enter into these lichakos, any of these uh, chambers, since you have to enter in from the Harabais, there's only one entry into these chambers, it is not sanctified with the sanctity of the Azara, but the Mishnah concludes, the Gagoseim Kodesh. But the roofs of these various chambers are sanctified with Kedusha Sazara. So we see that roofs are sanctified against Rav. Our answer is Tigama Rav Chizda, Be Shegagoseim. Shavin Lekarka Azor. These were subterranean chambers that were built underground, and the roof was exactly parallel, it was like a continuum of the Ritzpas Azor. And therefore, those gagos on top of these subterranean chambers have the sanctity of the Azor. So the Mishnah is not talking about. Lishakos, off, uh, offices or chambers in the Azura. The Gagim of those Lishakos would not be Kodesh. So when it says Gagosem Kodesh, we're talking not about a chamber inside the Azura, but underneath the Azura. And the entranceway was through a Maharabayas. And their Gagos had the status of Ritzpas Azura. And Ritzpas Azura was sanctified. So therefore, these gagos, you know, you can look at it from two perspectives. If you look at it from the perspective of the floor, it's just the roof of the floor. And that that floor exits, or you can only go through it, entry into it through the harbais, it's chol. But you could also look at the gag from a different perspective. The gag also has to be, happens to be the ritzpah sazorah. And insofar as it's ritzpah sazorah, it was this Kaddish, even according to Ra. Ram doesn't deny that the Ritzvah of the Azara is Kodesh. The Yehachi, the Gemara says, hey, Masefa. How are you going to return, how are you going to interpret the Sefa of that very same Mishnah that you claim is dealing with subterranean chambers? It says the following, that L'Shakos, Pinuyos Bachol, if they were built on the Harbayas, in Psuchos La Kodesh, but they have an opening, an exit, an entranceway into the Azara. Then Tochan Kodesh, the airspace inside these chambers is sanctified like the Azara. And why? Because you enter into this airspace from the Azara. Vigago Seim Chol. However, the rooftops of these Lishakos, of these various chambers that are built on ground of Harabayas are chol. They don't have any sanctity. It's only the airspace because you enter into the airspace, the inner space of these of these Lishakos through the Azara and that airspace, the inner the inside of the chamber is now sanctified with the status of Kedusha Azara. But the gagos are not sanctified. Vesal Kedaitz, if you're telling me that this price is talking about lechakos, the gagos say I'm shoving lekarka zora. Ah, if you're talking about chambers and the roofs of these chambers are on the same plane as the uh, the ground of the azora. So why does it say tochan kodesh? And we said that Tochen Kodesh is because you enter into the chamber through the Azara. And we're saying that it's called Psuchos La, La Kodesh and therefore Tochen Kodesh. So the Gemara asks, Veho Omar, just one second, is Havile Mechilos, Veomar Rabbi Yochanan, Mechilos Lonis Kadshu. Rav Yochan makes a statement that the subterranean chambers that were built underground do not have the sanctity of the Azara. The sanctity of the Azara begins 
with the ritzpa and goes and goes vertically up, but not below ground. There's no kedusha below ground. Now this is really actually a sugyan zvachim, if I remember correctly, where there's kedusha vazar below ground. But Rabbi Yochan takes the position that mechilos lonis kadosh. So therefore, the Gemara concludes that it seems that it's impossible to interpret this price as referring to the sub to, uh, to describe and and uh, and qualify that these chambers are subterranean because they couldn't have kedusha according to Rabbi Yochanan, and yet the Mishnah says tochan kodesh. So the Gemara says kika Amar Rabbi Yochanan. Rabbi Yochanan was not making a flat, absolute statement that there's no Kedusha to subterranean chambers. That's not true. It all depends on how you get in and how you get out. If it's open only through the base, the Harabais, that's what Rabbi Yochanan said. It doesn't have sanctity. And in truth, it doesn't even have the sanctity of the Harabais. But Kisanya, he but that which we learned about Lishakos that were built in Chol and they were Psukos Kodesh and they have the sanctity of the Azara, that's Mechilos HaPsukos LeAzara. But Sanya the Gemara says, what about the following Brisa, Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Mechilos Mitachas HaHechal Chol. Now, if we're talking about Mechilos, that open up into the Azara. And Rabbi Yehuda nevertheless believes that since they're located primarily in the Arabais, they don't have the status of Azara. And we see now that even though these chambers are below the Hechel, which means in the Azara, they still have the status of Chol. And you just told me that any chamber that has an entranceway into the Azara, it has the status of Kodesh. The Gemara says, Ki Tanya Hahi, this Bryce is talking about what kind of Mechilos, Shepsuchos Lachol, that the only way you can enter into these chambers is through the Harabayas. But Enochinami, if you have subterranean chambers that are open into the Azara, they are sanctified. Toshma, Here's another bris so that's going to be problematic for Rav, and the bris quotes of Yehuda with regard to the mechilos that are subterranean and vegago kodesh. The roof of the hechal is kodesh, and that's against Rav, who says that gagin lon is kadosh. Now here there's a major problem. What do you mean? There's a what's the problem from this price? So this price is talking about the Gag of the Hecha. And we already proved that Rav agrees that the Gag of the Hecha is Ms. Kaddish. So he writes here in the footnote. Etc. That we can't ask for a Hechal. Shekane Bimikra Shevia Gemara. Although the Posik establishes the Posik from Dibra Yomim that they sanctify the Alios of the Hechal. So those are the chambers on top of the Hechal, but it doesn't say anything about the Gagim of the Hechal. The Gemara is assuming now that according to Rav, the Gag of the Hechal. Is Lonis Kaju. So now here's a case where the Makshan raises his objection, and then the Gemara says, Oh, and according to you, my friend the Makshan, everything works out well. But Tizbara, are you going to explain and understand this Brysa? Let's call it Kipshuto, you know, on a superficial level, that the Gag of the Hechel is sanctified with the Kipshutas Hechel. And that's the conclusion you want to derive from this price against Rab. Vakhtani, we have another price that says, Gagin Halolu, the rooftops of those Lishakos, of those chambers in the Azara, ain't Oklim Shom Kodesh 
they do not have the status of Kodesh. And normally you could eat Kodesh Kadosh in the Heichal, but here you're on the rooftop of the Heichal, of these chambers, and that's also to eat Kodesh Kadosh, they talk to some Kodesh Kalim. In other words, it doesn't have the sanctity of Tzitzah Zorah. And that would support Ra. Viela Kasha. But now you'll ask the Kasha on Rabbi Yehuda because Rabbi Yehuda says that Gago Kodesh, the Gaga the Hechel is Kodesh. There's the Gemara of Rav Chavabar Guria. What does Rabbi Yehuda mean when he says that the Gaga the Hechel is Kodesh? It's only Kodesh vis a vis Osan Shte Amos. Shte Amos are, are poles. And these poles were used to measure the base of Mignos, different areas. They were like measuring rods for the purpose of Binyan base of Mignos. Now they also put on the Gag of the Hechel other clay kodesh that they needed for building purposes, but not clay kodesh that we use for the Mizbeach. Those were put on other in other places. So let's understand what these two poles were, Shte Amos. This now we learned in the mission of Seth the Kalim, Shte Amos, each one of these Amos was called an Amo because it's a it has the length of an Amo. Hoyu, they were in the base of Migdash, in a Lishka, which is called Shushana Bira, Hoysa Benuya Al Gova Shara Mizra. If I get a chance, depending on how much time we have, remind me, I want to tell you why this was called the Shushan Abira Lishka. Anyway, it was built on a higher plane at the entry into the area of the Big Dutch, the Shar HaMizrach. Achas, one of these two uh, poles would be placed on Karen Mizrach's Tzfonis, on the northeastern side, the Achas al Keren Mizrachis Dromus. On the southeastern side. So we're on the we're on the eastern side, either north or south. One second. Did I get that right? Yeah, north or south. Now, what were the sizes of these two Amos? So, Sha'al Karim Mizrachis Tzfonis, the one on the northern side, again, we're always on the east, but the one on the northern side, Haisa Yisera Al Shal Moshe, Moshe Rabbeinu's Amo was the normal regular Amo, which is six Tfachim. But this Amo on the Tzfonis side had an extra Chatzi Etzba. So it was longer than the classic Amo, the zoo. And the other Amo, Shalkeren Mizrachis Dromis, on the southern side on the east, Paisa Yisera Olea, so the second of this set of two poles was longer by a chatzi etzpa than the first armor that was on the on the northern side. Ninsays Yisera al Shalmosha etzpa. In other words, if the second one of these motos was longer than the first moto by a half an etzba. And the first moto was longer than Moshe's ama by a half an etzba. So we're going now as far as the second ama with an extra etzba. So it's shisha tfachim the etzba.
So now the mission explains. For lava hayu, achas gedola v'achas ketan. When you wanted to measure the base of Migdosh, why would you have these two amos, each of which is longer than the amo of Moshe Rabbeinu, and you're measuring the base of Migdosh, and then one amo is larger than the other amo? What's it all about? So the mission explains. The umnin, these were the professional uh, workers who were hired by the Gizbar of Hegnich to do the Malacha de Vesam Migdash. They would get paid according to the Mida of the smaller Amma. So the Gizbar made a condition with them. And he said, I want you to build the following amos. And I'm going to pay you the following price per amo. And I'm going to pay you per Moshe Rabbeinu's amo of six tfachim. But when the workers would complete their work, they would have to return the gdola, the ama gdola, the larger ama. Now, why was it so? It sounds like we're cheating the workers. And the Gemara says, that if we give them exactly a mida, and and it's the Midash and Eschai, but then there's always going to be a suspicion, maybe they'll do it a little bit less than that Midah, and then they're going to benefit from Hegdej more than what they do, because we're going to pay them for an Amma, and they did less than an Amma. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to add a condition, and we're going to say, we want you to build more than an Amma. We're only going to pay you an Amma's worth. So Vitate lovely and why these two motos? Achas le kaspa vidahava, the achas livinyana. So there's a lot of malach that had be done with the silver and the gold, right? To build various parts of the of the uh, of, of the base on Migdosh. And there was malach that was done with stone. Now in the case of gold and silver, that umnus is a very high class umnus, and the umnus didn't want to lose too much. You know, they they gave up other jobs in order to do this job, so they wanted to be paid full pay. So they gave him an extra half an etzma, and that they were able to accept. But as far as the malach of binyan avonim is concerned, that's not such a sophisticated avoda. And there they would take from the umnus based on the Amagdola, which is greater than Moshe's Amma by an Etzma. Tanam, we learned in the Mishnah, Chalonos, Be'ovi ha'choma kilifnim. The windows of the Azara and the wall of the Azara is considered like inside the Azara. So the Gemara says, Bishlam, I understand ha'chalonos, that the windows of the Azara have a din of lifnim. And what does that mean? Mishkachas la dishavya lekarka Azara. We can have a sanctity in the Azara of the Chalonos, even according to Rav, who holds Gagim Valil Sonis Kadashu. And we're talking about a case where the height of these chalonos reaches the level of the ritzpah sazar, of the karkazar. So therefore, it's not considered gagin and alios. But ovi achoma hechi mishkachasla, how can you say that this kedusha, it's kilifnim, it's as if it's inside the azara, it has the kedusha, the azara, if they didn't sanctify gagos, roofs, they didn't sanctify the Oviakova, I mean, the thickness of the wall. 
And the Gemara says, Mishkachas lo bibar shura. We're talking about a small wall that was located directly uh, pr- directly contiguous uh, next to a larger wall. And at certain points, the height is the height of the Karka Zora. And therefore, there's a Chalos Kedusha on this Bar Shura of the Oviakom. Shura Ubar Shura. Shura means a larger wall, and Bar Shura is a small wall. So let me just read to you the English translation of the Pasuk in Echa. I have here in this English translation. Sorry. He says the windows and the thickness of the wall are given the future of the inside. These are the window ledges, the tops of the walls. And these are similar to the chambers on top and the rooftops. I can understand the windows. I can find a, a case where there's Kedusha, this Kadosha, and the Chalonos. That's where the window ledge is level with the floor of the Azara. Ela Ovi Achoma, but as far as the thickness of the wall, how can you find a case where it is in this Kadoshu? How can the top of the wall? Be level with the floor of the Azara. My answer is, it says in the Pasuk in Echa, he made rampart and wall mourn. At the time of destruction, God made both the rampart and the wall mourn. I guess it means that all the universe is mourning at the destruction of the Beis Hamignosh. And this refers to a high wall and the low wall. So the rampart was the low wall. Okay, that's what we call hell. And the wall was high, was the high wall. In other words, what it says in the Pasuk, the Choma, that's referring to a high wall. He says that the conclusion here is that the windows and the tops of the walls are judged as inside the courtyard, but only if they are level with the courtyard floor. I think by courtyard, he probably means the Azura. Okay. And this leads us to the Mishnah on the bottom of Pevav Omer Aleph. 